Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Uh, welcome along and I'm happy to have with me as my guest, Chris Potter. Welcome along, Chris. Hello, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. And uh, now this Hangout has been in part at uh, Chris's request. Is that is that correct, Chris? Absolutely. I had heard through the grapevine you had requested a couple times to have a hangout and because of the circumstances i think it was totally appropriate to approach you and ask you hey let's go ahead and do this right so that's right so just to clarify there were a couple of times when i put the invitation out there to chris to join me for a hangout and uh, at the time those um, invitations weren't accepted for whatever reason um, but Chris then contacted me and actually, in fact, I was quite surprised that uh, I saw you had uploaded a video, Chris, saying that you were going to do a live hangout with Dazza the cameraman. And then a few minutes later, after you uploaded your email, you, uh, after you uploaded your video, rather, you emailed me about doing the hangout. So the yep. first I heard of it was actually through watching your video. Yep, that's right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so um, Chris, now I've got a, a series of questions. I, I did actually put it out there to uh, a few people to suggest a few questions to ask you. Sure. So I've got I've got a list that I'm going to go through, and yeah. um, we'll we'll hear your response. So, yeah. first of all, um, what is your motivation for wanting to do this hangout? That's a good question. Well, you had asked a couple of times uh, wanting to talk to me, I guess. Uh, one of the things that you say to folks is the, the olive branch, right? And that, that Facebook I'm locked out of. So for whatever reason, I believe Scott had told me. And I also heard for the second time that you had asked. And I'm like, well, because everything that happened, I'm like, I should go right to Daza. Let's talk about this. What's the problem? So that was my motivation. Okay. Um, now, do you, do you believe in free speech? Yes, I do. Okay, you do believe in free speech. What are your thoughts on censorship? Um. Wow. I think we need to be open and honest and not have censorship. However, in the society that we're in, I guess if you just want to talk about censorship in general, like even from a government point of view, right? I guess that's, that's kind of where we're coming from. There has to be certain constraints in place to protect the order of things and we'll say national security. So I period there and there has to be uh, uh, some in place, right? So I believe that yes, there has to be some censorship. Right, I would agree with that. I think that there are some uh, times when, as you say, in cases of national security, um, also sometimes because of commercial sensitivities, um, that there is a place for censorship. Um, what about on YouTube? That's a tough one. Um, I find it odd that folks are complaining of similar issues regarding uh, view counts, subscribers uh, dropping off, just general weirdness with their YouTube. So, and it seems to be, now I haven't done the research, it's along the lines of more conspiratorial type of channels or we'll say more uh, topics that are sensitive and controversial. It just seems a little bit odd. Now, uh, not to kind of step away from that, I believe it has a lot to do with like spam accounts and whatnot on YouTube, but there's all kinds of other algorithms, so who knows? Um, that um, And help bring me back sometimes if I kind of divvy, I apologize I do that. <laughs> so if you need to bring me back to, to center, please do if I get off topic. Um, on YouTube, gosh, I, I really think that YouTube is monitored and it has to be because there's so many people watching 
Well, I think that there was a, st a statistic recently okay. that it's like a billion hours a day that's watched. Okay. So I will just jump in and I'll, I'll just clarify. When sure, I talk sure. about censorship on YouTube, I'm really, it's interesting to hear your points about that, but I'm actually really talking about self censorship on YouTube. What are your thoughts on that? Self censorship. Um, Yeah, I think there's maybe too much that people might let hang out there that they shouldn't. So okay. there probably has to be a certain amount of self-censorship, yeah, that's reasonable. So you stated that, that you do believe in free speech. Mm -hmm. right. And we've talked about censorship on YouTube, particularly self-censorship. So my, ne my next question is, why have you disabled all comments on underneath your YouTube videos, thereby preventing discussion of your videos and the claims made in your videos and the right of reply yeah, to you? Yeah, I just don't want comments enabled. Well, that's fair enough. That's your decision. It's your YouTube channel, and of course, you're free to make that decision. But it's it's interesting to hear your thoughts about free speech and uh, self censorship in in that context. That's okay, fine. so moving along. Um, so as I say, since you've disabled comments, it does prevent right of reply and comments from people. So it's actually quite good to have this hangout, this forum, where we can actually go back and forwards with some questions to you, sure. and you can respond to them directly. Okay. Um, so first of all, a couple of questions from me to you. Do you think that I'm a paid disinformation shill working for the government or some other agency? No. No, I don't. Because you're about as much as I, as you, what am I trying to say? I'm as much of a top secret agent as you are. There's no way. And if you are, you're really good. Okay. So the answer is so no. What do you think then of the allegations that Dazza the cameraman is a paid disinformation shell? I think that that is. These are good questions. Um, I think that folks will say that because they're afraid to face you and deal with the hard questions. Avoid the topic, right? Avoid you. So, and it's probably tough to face somebody that has hard questions when you're trying to push out material that you can't necessarily prove. So, of course, it seems to be that that is like a knee-jerk reaction. And we'll say in social media that if you, we'll say, are a debunker, or you just have an, an intelligent mind and want to refute and debate the information, you are immediately a government paid show. Immediately. Right. And so I think, I, that's why. Okay. And I think I'd have to absolutely uh, agree with um, your response on that. That is exactly the way that I see it. It seems that if you go in and debunk anyone's nonsense, then you are automatically labeled a paid disinformation shill. Totally. That's it. I immediately became one. As soon as I stopped the Nibiru thing, I immediately, I just was granted and gifted that uh, notoriety. Yes, absolutely. But well, and, and well, I'm, I'm not even doing any, any debunking. So yeah, you're, you're one of the top guys. I'm just kidding, well, but yes. Thank you, Chris, and, and welcome to the Paid Disinformation Shell Club. So um, I, just, I just hope that you won't have to wait for your paycheck as long as I've, I've been waiting for mine, because I've been waiting for about six years now, and it still hasn't arrived in the mail. I hope it's a big one now. <laughs> it better be a big one. Okay. Do you think I'm a troll? Now that I've had an opportunity to look at both sides, no, I don't think you're a troll at all. Okay, well, you, you have actually stated that I'm a troll in your video. I have in the past. Yes, sir, I have. Right, I have. okay. Um, what was the deal with um, your videos about your microphone being bugged? 
Okay, so good question. I'm glad you asked. Here's the knockoff device here. <laughs> okay. Now, yeah, use it for Mr. Radio next time. It won't cost you anything. <laughs> absolutely. I think it was only 20 or 30 bucks, right? And I did see your debunking video. Okay, so what I got to tell this because I felt stupid and, I, and I'll even apologize again publicly because I, I want to do that. I really need to. Okay, so uh, the two individuals I was working with before, the he and the she, we're just going to keep them S and C. There we go. The two individuals I was working for or with before um, started implying heavily that there were leaks in the three of our group. And me being a computer guy, because that's kind of what I do all day long, I'm like, well, let me look at a few things. I kind of went nuts. And I found this thing, and I'm like, dude, I got a bug in the microphone, <laughs> right? And so I went through. I, I was feeling very bad that the, the guy I was working with, S, okay? I just don't want to say their names. I, I, I don't need to. And I don't need you to get a privacy strike either because I know they're waiting to do something like that on this hangout. And I'm gonna make sure this is a crystal clear, pristine hangout for many reasons, so that there's no issues for you in that regard, because I think it's friggin' ridiculous. Anyway, sorry. Um, so I'm feeling bad that there's a leak. And so I go nuts. I do a full security audit. I wipe my drives, pull my drives. I mean, I've got extra drives. I've got software. Linux is free, right? So whip up a couple virtual machines, boom, boom, boom. And then I go ahead and, and they're still complaining that there are leaks, you know, and who is it? And I'm like, okay, it's only S, C, me, and R, okay? that's basically in the entire group of there's only four people that would ever have been involved if there had been any leaks. Okay. So I'm like, I'll just take the responsibility. I went nuts and I'll wrap this up. Sorry. Uh, I did the video that I was bugged. Then you did a video that you're not bugged. And then I lied and made a video. I'm like, I did that cause I knew you were waiting to, you know, make a video about me and make me look stupid. I looks, I felt so stupid. I didn't know what to do. Right. Well, yes. S and C's reaction to that was kind of weird. I did buy another friggin' microphone and I replaced it. And okay. I even showed him the evidence that it wasn't good enough. Okay. So you've just, you've just acknowledged that um, your response was saying in your, in your response video that, uh, Basically, you had set me up. You had set Dazza the cameraman up that for was a lot. Yes. Okay. Now you mentioned. I'm sorry, I did that. I'm a jerk. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> okay. Now you mentioned R before. Can you just clarify? Oh, who yeah. R uh, is? I, I think I know who you're talking about. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, S's girlfriend. Right. That's who I thought you meant. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So tell me, Chris, when did you first hear about Nibiru Planet X? <laughs> Thought about this for a couple of days, so I knew exactly how everything transpired because I knew you would have people that asked. Um, I, I believe I separated in December of 2013. I had opened a YouTube channel. I would say six months into 2014. I was looking at Dane Wigington's geoengineeringwatch.org and I was talking with him on Facebook and then on the phone and I was helping him with some cool little technical, technical issues for real. This is when Dane started before, wow, this guy gets trolled like crazy. Anyway, so I'm looking at that and I came across Bob Fletcher and uh, 
John Moore. Both of those interviews captivated me because the way it played out, and I'm, I'm almost certain you, uh, uh, David, are aware of both of those. Uh, they're one or two hour videos. They're very famous. You could do, do a search, John Moore and Nibiru, boom, it's going to come up and it's like a red background with the guy. Anyway, both of those interviews captivated me because there was something that stood out. There was a rogue planet. They couldn't tell us about it. They had to put us under martial law or the entire economy would fail because everyone would freak out when it came in. And they seem to be saying the same story and it wigged me out. And so, yeah, that's when I started investigating it heavily, I would say June of 2014. So that was my next question. So when did you uh, start actively researching Nibiru Planet X? So you're saying um, June, did you say, of 2014? Yeah, about June. We'll just say six months into 2014, so June 2014. Okay, so we're talking about three years that you've been actively researching Nibiru Planet X. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever seen any convincing proof that there is a brown dwarf or Nibiru Planet X within our solar system? No. I've had an opportunity, so... This whole experience that's happened to me has helped me to look back and completely change everything I've thought about. I've Every single thing I've said and I've talked about is probably BS because we're looking at pictures from people's cameras or NASA's cameras. And it appears that there are way too many issues with light, camera, et cetera, et cetera. For somebody that does not have a trained eye, and I believe that you get caught up into, hey, you know, this is crazy cool looking, something's wrong. So I, I think that was, uh, if that answers your question, and if you uh, help me keep on task here, sorry. What was your question yeah. again? Sorry. So the question was, have you ever seen any convincing proof that there is a brown dwarf or Nibiru planet X within our solar system? Yeah, sorry. Um, I just, I haven't. I've seen a lot of things that really had me convinced that possibly I was seeing something, but it seems like over the three years, every single picture, even of uh, folks that have given them to me directly, I've been able to just look on YouTube channels like yours and others that very simply debunk a lot of this stuff for being the camera or types of clouds um, and just different stuff in astronomy. Um, I just haven't. I have not. I've seen a lot of cool stuff, but no, I haven't. That's, yeah, that's my answer. Okay, so the answer but is you have, <laughs> you've never seen any convincing proof of a brown dwarf or Nibiru planet X within our solar system. No. Okay, so we we do of course see lo lots of videos uh, claiming to show a Nibiru, or Planet X, or Brown Dwarf um, somewhere in the sky next to the sun, as seen from the South Pole, uh, and all sorts of webcams um, all over the place. Um, and of course, whenever those videos are scrutinised, they can usually be identified or debunked. Um, I can't say that I have ever seen any video which showed me con conclusive proof of a brown dwarf Nibiru Planet X anywhere in our solar system. Now, I'll just clarify, there has been discussion in recent months about a possible Planet 9 as um, researched by the uh, Caltech researchers Brown and Batigen. I have mm -hmm. every reason to believe that there may well be a Planet 9 way out in the far reaches of our solar system. We are discovering new objects all the time. Now, when I say new objects, that doesn't mean that they've suddenly appeared from nowhere. Those objects have been there all along. Uh, remember, once upon a time, uh, we were only aware of six planets in our solar system because the other ones are too far away uh, to be seen with the naked eye. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, you know, we have since discovered dwarf planets. We've also discovered exoplanets around other stars. 
Uh, we've discovered thousands of exoplanets, in fact. So, you know, for there to be a possible planet nine, as, as they've called it, way out in the far reaches of our solar system, and as I recall, Brown and Batigen have calculated uh, that if this object exists, then at its closest approach, it would come no closer than 200 AU to our sun. Now, by comparison, Neptune is 30 AU. Uh -huh. away from it. So uh -huh. that just puts it in perspective. Not even Brown and Batigen have ever seen their, um, their planet nine, if it exists at all. No one has seen it. It may well exist, but if it does, it is not Nibiru, it is not Planet X, and it certainly is not within our solar system. And when I say within our solar system, I'm really talking about within the orbit of Neptune. Okay, now our solar system does go a lot further out than Neptune, mm -hmm. but when I say within our solar system, that's what I mean. Okay, moving along. I like that. Okay. okay. How did you get involved with S? Um, um, Let me put it another way. How did you get involved with Nibiru Planet X, The Awakening? Good. Good. I like that. Um, I, okay, so I opened my channel a few times and closed it. <laughs> so we'll say on maybe the third or fourth iteration of my channel, the third possibly, I closed it October 6th. So right before that, of 2016, S had reached out to me a few times. His channel was, I think, at like 16,000, and he kind of came out of nowhere. And you know, he just wanted to collaborate and chat. It was cool. And I left the community and went and dated a crazy person. Came back. My my dad had a heart attack. He's doing well now, and it helped me to break up with this crazy person and I started doing YouTube again. Uh, I would say like immediately within January, I started uh, talking to S um, and I believe we started talking on the phone um, almost right away. Um, 2017? In 2017, yes, I apologize. So January of 2017, so January, February, so I'm a little bit uh, rough on this right now. I'm not totally remembering, but I know for a fact that we had, we had talked, we had at least talked on the phone once or twice. He wanted to show me some pictures, that's right. And we, we were able to sit down and, and see a few. Um, and then I actually shared some screenshots from that that he didn't know about <laughs> with, with C. And she was like, well, we shouldn't share those. And then um, I would say February, March, I started collaborating with them almost daily. And then with, with C. Right. So how, how did you first come into contact with uh, C? And I'm, I'm going to come out and say it because sure. she uses her name, Dr. Albers. OK, that's fine. Uh, for Dr. Albers, I have the email right here. Hold on. And just while you're looking that up, I'll just ask the people in the chat, is the audio coming through okay? I'm getting some choppiness now and then, but how is the audio coming through in the chat? Go ahead, Chris. All right, buddy. Um, August 16th, 2016 at 9.44 a.m., Hi, Chris. I watched your video this morning of the sun from the ISS. I don't know how, how anybody can think that this is the real sun because it clearly cannot be real. This is it's really short. The unending lines of light look like laser beams. The hexagonal lens flares look like hexagonal filters <laughs> and lenses that have placed in front of this thing. The large circle is probably a containment for the laser beams. Wow. I don't think that they have been very successful in containing them, though, as we see lots of beams shining out in all directions. Sorry. I would say that this is actually a very bad copy of the sun. I have attached a document I have prepared that shows you where lens flares come from and how their shape is the same as the object the light forming them originally came from. Wow. Wow. All I can say is wow. 
and this is a person who is teaching in a university God help them is all I can say that's incredible I I've had to learn the hard way I was okay. too we'll get there go ahead <laughs> yep. now I've really covered this question in an earlier question already um, do you consider that any of the videos that S or Nibiru Planet X the Awakening mm -hmm. has ever presented has ever actually shown Nibiru Planet X no not at all no way we've already covered that one so we don't need to dwell on that that's okay yeah good question though. now what are your thoughts about the spots in the Hinade images identified by S and his resident expert Dr. Claudia Albers, theoretical I, particle I, physicist, as brown dwarfs. Uh, I saw a little bit of uh, material in that regard, and it looks like it's some kind of dirt or something on the lens, like for real, <laughs> and it's not for brown dwarfs. So yeah, that's, uh, you know, I do want to make this comment because it kind of segues, and I thought about this a lot that me as well as both of them came into an arena that we know nothing about who are we and to say anything you know what i mean we have no idea what we're looking at okay so, so on the brown dwarf right and when everything becomes a brown dwarf by the way that's a problem yeah. too huge red flag but yeah so i saw that and I was a little bit concerned, but I, I don't believe that it's for brown dwarfs. Right. Okay. So on that point, mm -hmm. Dr. Albers is a theoretical particle physicist, mm -hmm. as I understand. What are your thoughts on her branching out into basically astrophysics? Um, yeah, kind of back to what I was just saying. Uh, is she qualified to speak on astrophysics? No, Do you she's not. No, absolutely not. Period. The end. End of story. Have a good day. Nope. Right. Now, as as far as her being qualified as a theoretical particle physicist, I always like to say that it seems to me that she's a particle physicist in theory. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think, and I think you've also already covered this already, what do you think of Dr. Alba's claims that there are brown dwarfs near the sun? Do you think that's possible? I know that she is wrong and that there is no brown dwarf by the sun. Why would you say that, Chris? Because in the three years I've been looking for him, I never found him. Ever. Okay. And <laughs> what, what do you think would happen if there was a brown dwarf near our sun? So we're talking about near the center of our solar system, within the inner planet, so that's within the orbit of the Earth, between the Earth and the sun. What do you think would happen if there was a brown dwarf within our inner solar system? It would be very bad, chaotic. Uh, things would be moving violently, um, planets possibly, you know, not magnetic weirdness. What do you, what do you think would, would be, be for the <laughs> orbit of the planets? Sorry to cut you off there. What do you think no, would no, be? No, you're okay. Sometimes the hangout's goofy. You're doing great. Um, well, yeah, I think it would completely make chaos, and we would see the beginnings of the chaos as he comes in right right sorry I know. <laughs> do, do you think that if there were brown dwarfs and let's face it she's not just talking about one brown dwarf she's actually talking about a number of brown dwarfs at least um certainly at least three as far as yep, i can yep. tell yep do you think chris that you and i would be having this live hangout right now if there were brown dwarfs at the center of our solar system which had been there for some time no not at all 
why not? What what do you think would have happened by now? What would prevent us having this hangout? We, I mean, I'm pretty sure there would be all kinds of mass chaos in regards to the weather and such. Would completely knock out our electrical system, internet, etc. All the chaos that they they talk about, right, would be unleashed upon us. But we would see some signs beforehand. It wouldn't just appear. And I think that's kind of what you're kind of getting at is that this thing has just appeared out of nowhere and he's right by the sun and there's three or four of them. That can't be possible. Yeah, so we would see but, some serious side effects immediately. We wouldn't even be having this conversation. Yes. That's exactly my point. You've just hit the nail on the head. We wouldn't be having this conversation because I'm pretty sure that we would all be dead already. Okay. Yes. Now, just to go back to the point you made about, you know, seeing the start of things happening and so, some people will be jumping up and down and saying, oh, but we're seeing all this extreme weather and we're having earthquakes and, and volcanic eruptions and, and all that sort of thing. Well, mm -hmm. first of all, yes, we are having extreme weather. And I, I'm, I will be the first one to, to say we are seeing climate change. I agree. And I absolutely believe that climate change is because of our activities on the earth. Part of it could be because of um, long-term cycles that go on. But we know that the CO2 levels are going through the roof. They've already passed the 400 ppm level and yep. continue to escalate if you look at a graph mm -hmm. and we're seeing um, year on year and month on month record high temperatures globally uh-huh uh, yeah, yeah average right. globals uh -huh. um, we're also seeing year on year and month on month record local temperatures mm -hmm. uh, with the increased warming you get increased evaporation which means that you've got more moisture, water vapor going up into the air, mm -hmm. and we know that when when that goes up, it comes down. Okay, so we have increased rainfall. With increased rainfall, we have increased flooding. We have landslides and so on. And even here in New Zealand, mm -hmm. in recent weeks and months, even recent days, in fact, we have seen record rainfall and flooding we've had a major flooding event down on the south island wow and i believe that this we are certainly seeing the results of climate change now let me be very clear about this does this have anything to do with a brown dwarf or nibiru planet x coming through the solar system no it does not it has everything to do with local climate change Mm -hmm. Earthquakes have always happened, and in fact, this is how Dazza the Cameraman started, because we had a major earthquake here in New Zealand in Christchurch mm -hmm. in 2011, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it killed approximately 200 people, and there was a lot of fear-mongering that was going on around that. And uh, as a result of that fear-mongering and a prediction that was made that there was going to be a major earthquake on March 20th, 2012, um, now, I should clarify, the first earthquake was in September 2011, as I recall, but then there was a major earthquake in February of 2012. I hope I've got those dates right. I might be one year out, okay? But in the February earthquake was the one where there were approximately 200 people killed. Now, it was a local man who made a prediction that there was going to be a major earthquake in Christchurch on March 20th of 2012 as I recall and because of his predictions which were all lined up with with the phases of the moon and the super moon event that was occurring on that date I actually checked back onto the history of major earthquakes in New Zealand going back to about I think it was 1843 okay and I compared okay. I compared the dates of all of those earthquakes to the phases of the moon looking for the new moon and the full moon because according to this man Ken Ring um, this it would be a full moon it was a super moon and because of the alignment of the moon the sun and the earth and the gravitational forces being a super moon there was going to be a major earthquake 
Now, I checked back to, uh, I think it was 28 earthquakes that went back to 1843, and I found that there was absolutely no correlation between major earthquakes, certainly in New Zealand at least, and we are on an active fault line, and phases of the moon. In fact, if anything, I found that there were more earthquakes that occurred uh, aside from new moon and full moon. Okay, so that yes, is how yes. that's that's how Dazza the cameraman got started. And the important point that I'm making about that is that when people jump up and down and saying we're having earthquakes, we're having volcanic eruptions. All right, hey, it's business as usual. These are the forces that have shaped the Earth for millennia. You look at the mountain ranges. You, Chris, I've seen you going out for walks and so on. You look at the terrain. Uh, yeah. um, you know, consider the the mountains, um, and and these are the forces that have shaped the earth forever. It's nothing unusual. Earthquakes happen. Earthquakes happen, especially if you live in an, on an active fault line like New Zealand is. And I do too. We're right on the Pacific uh, Ring of Fire, um, and earthquakes are just part of life here in New Zealand, as they are in Japan and other similar places. Okay, so. Yes, the weather is changing. We are seeing climate change. Nothing to do with any brown dwarf or Planet X Nibiru. It is because of climate change. Okay. So we better move along and cover some more questions. Sure, sure. And um, that was well worth it. Thank you. Now, I've already asked you that question. That the, the, the doctor is supposedly a theoretical particle physicist. Yeah. So why is she acting as if she is an astrophysicist? And we've really covered that one. Yeah. So let me ask you, Chris, um, what do you think Dr. Elba's motivation is? And by the way, somebody in the chat did ask, why am I calling her Dr. Elba's? I'm calling her Dr. Elba's because that was her title that she was using and indeed confirmed because she was employed by a university. So I'm using that title in recognition of that title, but obviously we have some serious concerns about her claims. So Chris, what, what do you think Dr. Elba's motivation is with her claims? I really had to think about this. Um, <sighs> I guess I'm going to have to drop some bombs. Um, Fire away. I just feel like it's either a, a mental instability or it's because of abuse. I, I think it's related to a lot of things. Uh, you know, us as humans, I think we have hope for a better world, a better life. And some of us are religious. She's Christian, and I, I am too. However, there's certain boundaries <laughs> of reality, even in Christianity. And I believe that a lot of those boundaries were being overstepped in regards to her mental and emotional state. And I, I think it's related to abuse. Um, and I feel really bad for her um and i i i believe that she's super smart and she's kind of a conspiracy theorist so the conspiracy theorist part has gotten the best of her it's gotten the best of me in the past too you guys have all seen it i'm i'm trying to repent man <laughs> i don't want to do any of what i was doing before right i've totally turned over a new leaf so with her i, I I really have some serious concerns in regards to, to abuse and her mental state. And also that she just has a desire to want to learn and grow in that area and is very interested in that area. And she's, super, again, super smart, but kind of oversteps her bounds because she's not completely knowledgeable in that area. And it's easy to make mistakes, even for a theoretical particle physicist. Right. Now, so that was I, me. Okay, now I, I, I think mistakes is one thing. I mean, anybody can make mistakes. I'm, I make mistakes. I don't get it right all the time. And uh, 
but then there's there's quite a huge divide between making a simple mistake, getting a little detail wrong here and there, mm -hmm. which is what I'm really talking about, and claiming that there's a blimmin' sun simulator up there in the sky and that they're hiding the real sun. I mean, that's pretty out there, isn't it? You're right. Um, again, I would I try to give the benefit of the doubt. At some point, I did sit down with myself and go, uh, I think that she's the problem and you need to get out of this. So I kind of set it up for myself, by the way, to do so. Mm -hmm. um, and I made sure that both S and C knew that, that, hey, if I ever take off and you guys go and do this, know that I set it up that way, deliberately. <clears throat> okay. I, yeah. I Believe me, for a while I've been thinking about this. So, and just, and, and not to interrupt you again, sorry. I just the last couple of days have really thought about what her desire was to do so, and I still it eludes me. I'm not totally sure. So anyway, no. No, go ahead. Sorry, you touched on um, first of all you mentioned um, mental issues, and then you touched on abuse. And I'm guessing there, Chris, that, that you may have a bit of an insight. Obviously, you know some things about the doctor for you mm -hmm. to say that, to make that comment. And I can't help wondering, as, as many other people are, depending on the details of that sort of abuse, is do you think this is possibly what has attracted her to C? Sorry, to S. Oh, yeah. So, wow. I've been in <clears throat> a lot of uh, family recovery type of stuff with abuse because I myself went to a child abuse center when I was eight years old. My mother beat me. Okay, I'm sorry. And it's okay. We're good now. It took us 30 years, but we're good now, right? And I've forgiven her. She's a little right. bit crazy, and it's cool. She doesn't do that anymore. You tend to, so that, I agree, it's cool. Um, yeah. And you would actually be totally cool with the two, she would laugh. Um, but uh, this is different. That's kind of like child abuse or like, you know what I mean, which is still bad. That The type of abuse that I'm applying is either, uh, you know, sexual or mental, um, by multiple individuals over time. And because of that, the person is attracted to those type of relationships. So yes, I do see a pattern that she is attracted to being crapped on and being right. taken advantage of. Being attracted to abusive relationships. Is exactly, that what thank you. exactly, thank you. Mm -hmm. This is a pattern that does occur, sadly, with some people. They keep returning to abusive relationships. Um, do you think that the doctor, Dr. Albers, uh, really believes what she is claiming? Yeah, I do. Right. Okay. I'm going to get a water. Give me a second. Sorry. Uh, um, just while... Chris is stepping out there. I hope that the audio is still okay. It was getting a little bit choppy for me a little, little earlier, so I hope the audio is still fine in the in the chat there. Just let us know in the chat if, if we have any problems. I know why. It's That's partly my fault. It's the stupid, uh, my cooler, it will hit the microphone and go boop, 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 boop. That's my fault. Sorry, guys. We should not uh, hear it anymore. I, I think it's... I can see my CPU is working now almost 100%, so it's probably my computer just trying to keep up. Ah, okay, no problem. We'll figure one it out. Like, one day I'd like to get a, a, yeah, a better computer, and um, it will run better. Okay, so you think that, that Dr. Elbers actually believes the, I have to say it, crap that she's spouting, so... Yeah. In that sense, we have to be fair and say, well, she actually believes what she's saying. So I guess that really comes back to the mentally ill aspect of things, I would have to say. Fair comment? That's a fair comment. And when, and, and I wanted to clarify, 
that mental illness spans a great uh there's a huge amount of different uh, problems or uh, physiological symptoms that people will have that fall into the mental illness category. So, uh, and when that term is used, it's used with care and love and kindness and not, hey, you're a crazy freaking weirdo. That's not, because there's a negative connotation to the term. And I don't believe that that is fair. So I just want to clarify that you didn't say or do anything, but just because I care, I want to make sure people know that I do and I don't look at her any other way other than with love and I have concerns there and I guess I just wanted to clarify that. So, Sure, Chris, Thanks. and that's, that's a good point. And, and in me saying that she believes that, that what she's saying, that so this comes back to mental health issues, okay? Mm -hmm. And I have to be fair and say, I've suffered depression myself in the past. I know what that black dog is like. When you feel like you're down a really deep hole that you're never ever going to be able to climb out of. I've been there, I know what it's like, okay? Um, I, I suffer from migraine headaches and for years I was on a type of medication to help prevent the migraines. Um, mm -hmm. But I think they actually also made me paranoid for a while. I was starting to have all sorts, you know, I was starting to go down this rabbit hole of, of paranoid thinking along the sort of lines of the, of the type of stuff that I'm debunking these days. Would you believe that? There's the, the cameraman paranoid about things, right? So, I, wow, wow. You know, yeah, the, the, you really, that's huge, bro. Thank you for sharing that. That says a lot. Yeah, because so, anybody, you're right, though, anybody could, wow, yeah, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, so I was just going to say that that gives me a bit of an insight into the type of thinking as well, the paranoid thinking, because I have been there. I understand it, you know. I, I, I can understand what it is like to be paranoid. I've been there. So when I talk about Dr. Elba's having mental health issues, I don't say that to be unkind. I'm being realistic. I mean, a sun simulator And all the rest of it. Okay. So um, now, so moving along, what do you think S's motivation is? What do you think the motivation of Nibiru Planet X, the awakening, is? Money. Money and prestige. I have the biggest Nibiru channel. I am Marshall Masters. I am the one. Okay, so do you think he actually believes in what he's saying? Nope. Any of it? I don't think so, no. I think he knows, yes. You don't think that he believes that there's a brown dwarf near the sun? I don't really. No, I don't. I don't believe that he really believes that. I believe okay. that. It's all a business and money thing for him, and that's it. Okay, so I guess you've had a lot of conversations with him off air. What sort of insight can you give us uh, about those conversations that you've had with him about Nibiru Planet X? A lot of the discussions were how to maintain the channel and defend against trolling. And what some of the trolls said that day, and what some of our plans were with, um, you know, new live streams and maybe new content, or hey, did you see this on this channel? And oh, okay, maybe we'll talk about that kind of thing. So a lot of those conversations took place. That was kind of the the meat of what we talked about. Um, but my general impression. And I'm going to be totally fair and honest. He's a super caring person that has a lot of heart. Unfortunately, he shares what a lot of people do, which is criminal mentality. And I think that that's become a stumbling block for him because he's not really looking at people's 
livelihood. He's not looking at their heart. He's treating people like they're things and treating this topic like however many views I can get and the next thing I can put out, hey, this is cool, look at us, look at how we're gonna save so many people, right? Because we're letting so many people know that it's coming. But it just never felt that way from him, that it was just a monetary type of thing that people were just objects and that he was kind of in between jobs. Right, okay. So you stated it at the start when I first asked you that question. Sure, you had yeah. A, you had a one-word answer as to what you thought uh, S's motivation was. Yes, yes, money. Money, okay. So with that said, what can you tell us about the teeth whitening business? Okay. Um, he had let me know that he had a buddy that had a cool new product that would he it was a business model as well that you could set up and help whiten people's teeth with some natural type of thing and a laser okay something like that I'm not sure and that it potentially could make a lot of money because you can go ahead and set up the office. You don't have to have that many employees. You can do it yourself. You don't have to have very much training. You know, you only put this much money up front and this is how much money you can make at the end of the month charging your, your people. So it's a, a model that he had introduced to me previously. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> how it comes into the context of what we're talking about now is one of the last conversations that I had with, well, the last conversation that I had with C before she came to the United States was something to the effect, Chris, I, I think I'm in trouble. I think Scott's lying to me. I was able to get on a hangout with her and the gist of it was something to the effect that the money that I'm going to get from quitting my job, he mentioned we were going to probably use some of that money to start a teeth whitening business. And Chris, I'm really worried that I have, that he's lying to me and I've made the wrong decision. So I told her to immediately go back and beg for her job and tell her, tell him everything, tell him everything. Who cares? And I will stop today doing a physicist's thoughts. And I will even contact them myself and go, I'm sorry if I've been a part of the problem. I will not have any more of her content out on the web. We're going to be done today. She needs to keep her job. Come on. So, and I also said, you better keep your account there in South Africa. And you better not bring your money to the, to the Americas. You right. Don't. So, just to recap and correct me if, if <laughs> I've got any of this wrong. So, what you're saying <laughs> is that... It seems that S from Nibiru Planet X, The Awakening, had uh, designs on the money that the doctor was going to receive from her her settlement or uh, when she finished up her job in South Africa. And it looked like the money was allocated. Yes, go ahead, continue. Mm -hmm. And Sorry. so, and so, with it, some of that money at least. S was going to look at setting up a teeth whitening business with that money. Is that correct? And that yes, and that it was to help generate her income because she hadn't had a, she didn't have a job because she had just quit. She was here in America, and the YouTube business obviously isn't making that much money. So it was a a revenue generation business. Right. So we've got this really bizarre sort of situation here, as as I see it that. While S and the doctor are working together, making these videos on Nibiru Planet X, The Awakening, and Nibiru News, and, and the other channels, and so forth, mm -hmm. telling the world that the world is going to hell in a handbasket, and you know we're having earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, and the weather's turned to crap because of a brown dwarf through our solar system. That there's mm. brown dwarfs next to the sun, and basically, we're all in deep crap. 
and mm -hmm. they're setting up a teeth whitening business. Possibly. So although we're all potentially going to die, oh my God, there's a, there's a brown dwarf coming through the solar system. We're all going to die. But hey, you can have really nice shiny teeth <laughs> on the way out. You know, just make sure you've got shiny sound teeth. Sound. Come and come and see us and get your teeth whitened before you die, because we've got to get our priorities right. You know, it does sound totally ridiculous. So, with that in mind, do you think that somebody who seriously believed this stuff that they're putting out about brown dwarfs and our solar system and all the effects that it's going to have? I mean, look at the headlines on his on the titles of his videos. Do you think that his priority would really be setting up a teeth whitening business if he actually believed what he's saying? No, yeah, not at all. You're absolutely right that no. He would no. be making videos yeah. about, hey, this is how you make a fire without the ability to make a fire with the two fingers because the beer Excellent. was coming, right? Right, <laughs> yeah. yeah, good point. And there are some prepper channels out there who actually believe that, whatever's going to happen and they show people how to be prepared for you know they actually the, do the work right doomsday events they show you how to set up make fires purify your water uh, store oh. things so that they'll be safe all that sort of thing we're not really seeing anything of that nature from no, Nibiru planet. not at all no nobody the, the awakening right um, and you would think that, that that would be a priority if he was serious. And I, I'm guessing now we'll probably see some of his videos change direction a little bit. But the only thing that we see along those lines is the advertisement at the end of some of his videos for um, for foods and things like that. I forget the name of the website. And I'm not even going to mention it because I'm not going to do some free advertising for them. But I, I think you know what I'm referring to there. I do. Yep. Okay, so moving along with our list of, of questions, and we're doing doing very well. Good. Um, so, and bear in mind that some of these questions have been sent in to me. That's fine. If Chris indicates that he never really believed any of it, why did you continue supporting S and Dr. Albers for so long? Well, it's not that I didn't ever really believe. I truly, for a long time, believed that the pictures that we had, like, it really was a planet, and we were screwed. This is, like, more towards the beginning of my research. And... Uh, Prior to me closing the channel on October 6th of 2016, I believe that's when I closed it. Um, I continued because I, I thought, so as I started to awaken within myself, I guess, as to, you know, some of this stuff has to be BS, right? When I came back, I'm like, okay, 99% of the stuff is BS. Maybe there's 1% we can't explain. I think that's legitimate. And what I'll do is I won't talk about it because I want to change things up. I, I still had so many people giving me material. And I'm like, well, let's go ahead and put out some of the video and picture content to songs. And let's see if people like that. Um, and let me try to change it up. And I'll make sure not to talk about Nibiru Planet X, but I'll go ahead and put out news articles. And if the physicist gives me something, I'll put her presentation out because to me I really liked doing a presentation in a public setting I just kind of felt smart and it helped me with my communication and it helped me be able to do public you know on my YouTube videos aren't perfect but I I kind of make the point and I kind of do it nice and clean and not too weird um, and to where you can kind of see that the information there's other channels that do a lot better but it was a kind of a segue for me to learn how to be a, a better public speaker so uh, I continued because the other reason is once you get to a point in a topic like Nibiru and you find that maybe it's not true, what do you do with your channel? What 
I didn't know what to do. So I'm like, oh, I'll just keep putting content out. And we'll just see how things go. And so she keeps giving me material. And then I, I started getting trolled really bad. She reached out to Scott. And then that's when we started collaborating. And I really felt like she needed a bigger outlet or a bigger channel to put her information out. That's when I started to back away. And they were deliberately separating from me. I, I knew that I had to go a certain length of time. Not saying like, okay, continuing with the material from the physicist because that's total Nibiru, but everything else I was doing, I tried so hard not to have anything that was Nibiru Planet X because I was building up to a transition. I knew that I couldn't continue putting her material out for whatever reason. It was just right. something inside of me. I'm like, I just can't keep doing this. So as a matter of running the channel, because it is kind of my second job and I used a little bit of money to pay bills, <laughs> um, even though I have a really good job and I don't have anything to do, I'm not, I'm single now. So I gotta do something with my time, I'd be doing YouTube. So, all right, so what do I do? Okay, so I'll go ahead and put stuff out that's not related to Beer Planet X. I'll keep putting her stuff out. Oh, here's Scott. Well, okay, we can put the word out and maybe these guys can go ahead and continue and I can go ahead and do my own thing. So when they kind of lied about her coming here, well, they totally lied about that. And then we had a death in the family. It all dawned on me that everything was BS. And I just was like, I'm done with this. I can't do this anymore. I hate this. I'm so tired of this topic. I'm tired of these people. I'm tired of, I feel like I'm pushing material that we can't prove. And I'm, I'm sick of it. And, and so that's kind of why, that's my long-winded answer as to why I kind of continued along the lines of Planet X Nibiru, even though I, I, I was starting to see that it was BS, that, that it was lens flares, that the channels that were putting out information, nothing was peer reviewed. Nobody's an astrophysicist, nobody's an astronomer. And why are there so many debunkers? Because the debunking teams became stronger and more, uh, more common, more, uh, proliferated or whatever throughout the community, but and not in a bad way, but in a way that, Hey, I think people are kind of waking up to the fact that a lot of this is BS and we need to do something about it. So I just kind of like kept riding the roller coaster for a bit, trying not to say anything until I could leave. Right. Okay. Chris, I've, I've had a question in, in the chat, which I think is, is a very good question. Please ask Chris, when he first got that email from Dr. Albers, why did he even move forward at all with her? Did he believe he was blinded by her PhD? Oh, when back in August, when I very first started? Okay, yeah, so I mean, that, that was quite a crazy sort of email by the, by the sounds of it, talking about the sun simulator and all, all yeah, of yeah. the so, light and the rest of it. Yeah, so I was like, Wow, it's a physicist. Yeah. Short answer if you can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a physicist, man. Oh, uh, she can help me. We're going to figure this out. And I just ran with it. I really thought it was super cool. Right. Okay, now just quickly respond to a couple of other comments. Right. Mm -hmm. Defamation. Now, no, we're not out of bounds here. This is not defamation. Defamation is when you say something about somebody that is not true. Okay. When you tell the truth about someone or a situation, that is not defamation. You see reporting on the TV news all the time, reporting of real situations. Now, if they report something that's not true, then the TV station can be sued for defamation. Okay. So... Okay. Let me be very clear here. What we're talking about is we're not making up lies. We're not telling half-truths. We're actually discussing what went on. So first of all, it's not defamation. If anybody wants to try and sue me for defamation, bring it on. Um, secondly, there was a comment about me having blocked somebody. 
I'm not sure because I, I can't follow the chat while I'm doing the interview so well. Um, let me be very clear that uh, Scott from Nibiru Planet X The Awakening is not blocked on my channel. He does, however, have me blocked. He does love to come over to my channel and drop his expletive ridden, abusive, disgusting comments and run away, knowing that I can't reply to them. But because I believe in open and balanced discussion, uh, and I especially believe that if I'm debunking somebody, they should have a right of reply, Scott is not blocked on my channel. Now, I'm not sure if that comment was um, actually directed at, at me blocking Scott, but anyway, I just thought I should clarify that. Cool. So, moving along. Okay. Why have you decided to come clean now? What's your motivation? We had a death in the family, and these guys lied to me and I completely lost it in a video for five minutes screaming at the top of my lungs that Scott was a liar and I sprained not strained my vocal cords luckily I didn't have to not talk for six months where singers that strain their vocal cords they can actually have to be like on like home arrest or whatever where you can't speak for six months or a period of time to help your your voice repair it was such an emotional experience i completely just it was a meltdown i want nothing to do with nibiru planet x or those two people ever again ever right i'm done well, i just i'm sick of it that's my well, answer sorry <laughs> i'm very sorry to hear of the the death in your family um and I guess that that hit you at a very emotional time with everything that was happening with the doctor. And I guess maybe the timing. Was, yes. Thank you yeah. for, and I'm not trying to interrupt you, David, or be too long. Um, it was around the time that she was going to come out and they weren't talking to me and letting me know what was going on. It was just too much. So yeah, it was a combination of things. Okay. Now my apologies to the chat too the, the chat is ticking over so fast I'm, I can't keep up with it while we're doing the interview but hopefully later we'll, we might get some time for that now no several months ago I can't remember exactly when this was but several months ago during a live hangout with Mari and Jake I seem to recall that you said that you were done with Planet X and fear mongering <laughs> do you recall that I, I okay for what I don't remember exactly what I said I had just come back and opened my channel up and just had come back into the community and was kind of looking around and see what was going on. And from the experience I had with my ex-girlfriend at the time, yeah, at the time I felt like I should probably completely ignore the topic and be done with it. But right around that time Scott started talking to me so it looks like it was right at the beginning yeah it had to have been January so he immediately kind of leapt on me and was letting me know hey you know these guys are talking all kinds of smack about you um, so yeah I immediately changed my my position because at first I was like yeah I just don't want to do this and I think it's hurting people's lives. And I kind of thought differently about things because the ex-girlfriend I was with had me kind of thinking about things differently. And she kind of felt like I was being irreverent with the information and that I needed to chill about it. And so coming back in and, and I had had time with Mari cause she was like my, she was my first, like my number one subscriber. And, and so I have time, uh, I have history with Mari. And because of that, I feel comfortable talking with her and, and uh, discussing whatever. So yeah, I, I was kind of a flip flop. Right. I, I was I didn't want to do it, and then right after that, Scott got a hold of me and uh, convinced me. Right. And then right after that's when I did the astronomy live video. Go ahead. Right. Okay. So I'm I'm actually pleased that you actually answered with that phrase. You used the term flip flop, and yes. I was going to put that to you that you had done a flip flop. Yes, sir. And I think it's fair to say that we've seen a few flip-flops from you. Yes. And this, this has been a very frank discussion with you, and I think you've been very honest with me in your answers. 
and I just hope that after this hangout is over that we won't see another flip-flop. Uh, that would be very sad. I You're seem not going to see it, buddy, unless that thing's outside. Remember? I'm well, not kidding. If I walk if I outside and I see him, then we'll report on him then. Okay? But I will... You guys hold me to it. I will do good. And Absolutely. I understand that your guys' hesitation. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. I understand. Uh, I seem to recall at about that same time that you gave your opinion of Steve Olson. And as I recall, you were saying that he was a fraud or words to that effect. Yes. Okay. At the time, um, I was concerned that he, as well as S, but more of uh, WSO, um, was not researching any of the material that they were putting out at all. And I really, I had a chance to look at some of your videos debunking him. And I'm like, he looks like a total idiot. What is he doing? And I'm like, wow. And that was why I stopped talking about some of the, the pictures that I would get from folks because he looks so bad talking to the pictures. So I'm like, well, I'll keep sharing the pictures, but I'll eliminate my speech. And then I can continue to keep my subscribers and keep videos going. See, I didn't know what to do. But yeah, I did say that. Absolutely. And, and sorry, WSO. I know you're watching, but um, you don't vet any of your work at all. Do you think he's a fraud? I have some serious concerns because of I guess he had like he was gonna have little WSOs all over the country or whatever and I, I don't know the story I hope he didn't defraud people of money and I hope that the FBI or whoever is not involved I hope that it's all a rumor and everything's fine I believe strongly that WSO is not vetting his information and he knows it and he's at a point where I was where you have so many people but it's different with these guys with the bigger channels because it's their income they can't just stop like I did what do they do they have to keep putting the information out how are they gonna transition I saw his attempt to do that and that was the GNN channel and it didn't do, I, I haven't looked, but it didn't do that well. It didn't do that well for me trying to do news articles. Because you're probably like I do, and I go look at my, my videos and view counts, etc. And those type of topics don't get a lot of views. So in that sense, he's being fraudulent. I guess if that's the right word, yes. There okay. are a few of those folks out there. Sorry, I'll be, I'll be cool. Sorry. I didn't start to get, get upset. <laughs> Okay. Um, another question that I've received is, was Scott paying you? No, not at all. Nope. You've received no monetary payment from Scott whatsoever? No, sir. Okay. Do you know if there is a relationship between Dr. Albers and, and Scott? There probably is, yes. Okay. And did uh, and I hope you don't mind me asking, but this is sort of ties in with the question of the motivation for wanting to do this hangout and everything that happened. Did you want a relationship with Dr. Albers? No, never. Never. Okay. <laughs> All right. So in that case, that we can't say that this is why you fell out with, with Scott and Dr. Oh, Albers. no. Yeah, that's a good question. Nope. Okay. So... Was Scott paying Dr. Elbers when she was in South Africa? Do you know? No. No. Okay. Now, again, uh, Chris, bear in mind that these are questions that have been sent in to me, and I think we've already covered off some of this, but I'll read out the question because it's been sent to me. 
true. You knew Nibiru was complete nonsense, yet you called us trolls when we were telling the truth. Why? When you are, okay, where I was at with my channel and wanting to stay in the community and wanting to pull out and I didn't have the opportunity to, but I had made it to where I could leave the three of us. Um, you have to defend your position, right? So you have to call people trolls. You got to tell them that they're idiots or whatever, because you have to defend your position because you're wrong and you're so wrong. You have to defend it. And on top of that, well, you have some prestige or whatever, like your YouTube channel. You, you need to preserve that, Chris. You, you need to keep that, you know? Um, and I guess that was some of it was kind of an ego thing. But I guess a lot of it is just I, I haven't left. Am I going to close my channel or am I going to leave the community? How am I going to do this? I have to continue to play the part. And I apologize. Yeah, I probably hurt a lot of people's feelings. That's exactly right. why I did that. You mentioned earlier being trolled quite heavily, and I was a little bit puzzled by that comment. Uh, how were you trolled given that you have got comments disabled on your videos? What did you mean by that? The email. Okay. Email and then folks' uh, videos on YouTube. Okay. Do you, ex Chris, do you accept that fear mongering causes vulnerable people a great deal of anxiety and fear? and can result in suicide or self-harm? Oh, um, it certainly doesn't help. It doesn't help. I guess that would be the best way to say it. I, I would say that type of material would be, should be avoided by an individual like that, yes. Right. And I have previously shared the example of 16-year-old schoolgirl Isabel Taylor who hanged herself in 2011 over her fears about the coming end of the Mayan calendar on December 21, 2012. Uh, she had been looking at a lot of um, end, end of world doomsday sites uh, on the internet. And uh, as a result of her fears about a, I believe she was concerned about there being a nuclear meltdown basically um, because of the the effects that was were supposed to be happening and she felt that she couldn't face that and she hanged herself a 16 year old schoolgirl very tragic now of course we don't really get to hear all of the stories but as i've mentioned previously i do regularly get messages from people who are very anxious very frightened about what they're seeing in YouTube videos. I do too. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. And of course, on my Facebook pages, in, including Voices of Reason to Explain X, and there are other Facebook pages such as Cosmophobia and others, and where there are people who are very scared, very frightened about what they're seeing in these videos. So this is, and as I said at the start of this um, hangout, this was the motivation for me becoming involved in debunking, mm -hmm. going right back to that earthquake prediction. It's a, a, a major catastrophic earthquake that was forecast or predicted mm -hmm. for March 20th, 2012. And uh, as I mentioned, for anybody who's who's joined the, the Hangout uh, later, uh, my debunking work started when I checked back on the history of major earthquakes in New Zealand going back to, I think it was 1843, to yep. compare those earthquake events against the phases of the moon, new moon, full moon, and I found that there was no relationship whatsoever. So that's how Dazza the cameraman started. Um, now I've got some uh, some more questions for you, Chris, and, and we're almost done, by the way. And then okay. I might okay. we might look at some questions from the chat if we get time. Sure. Um, now I have a question regarding a video. Yeah, live yeah. live stream while driving. Now I'm not sure if that was the title of it or just a description of the video. Okay. Live, okay. live stream while driving. Do you know what I'm referring to? I've had a few live streams while I was driving. Um, okay. we'll oh, I'll just clarify. <laughs> um, who are you referring to 
in your live stream while driving video a few weeks back when you stated that you attempted to drive all the way to the East Coast to confront some people. Can you clarify what you were talking about there? That probably the, the, the South Coast? Or the East, East Coast? Coast I'm told. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was probably right before I, I had the fallout with S and C. And I believe that was referring to Mari and Jake. So okay. I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. It was right before. I'm pretty sure that that's what it was. But we're good now and we're past that. So, right. Sorry. Now, I have a couple of specific questions from Astronomy Live who is in the chat. Sure. Good. And I'm going to quote him here. You stated in one of your first videos threatening me that you had been in Florida looking for me. And I'd like to know if that's true as well. Did I say that I was going to? I Okay. I never went to Florida. I thought about it. Scott had me so hopped up and pissed off. I was like, dude, this guy's going down. I never did. It was a lie. Sorry. Okay. Now, of course, we did see in some of your earlier videos, uh, and I seem to remember one where you were talking about your punching bag, <laughs> and uh, you made some pretty serious threats to Astronomy Live and, and others in that video, I'll have to say. Now, one other comment from Astronomy yes. Live. Yes. Lastly, given Scott's threatening text message sent to Jake referencing my girlfriend, I'd like to know how much he and Scott Sorry, how much you and Scott knew about who she is and where she lives? I didn't understand that question. This is from Astronomy Live. Oh, okay. So there was a, a threatening text message sent to Jake referencing Astronomy Live's girlfriend. Astronomy oh, Live. I don't know about that. Okay. Astronomy okay. Live would like to know how much you and Scott uh, know about who she is and where she lives. Oh, I know nothing. Oh, I know That's nothing. the first time I even heard about it. Did he? Okay. Ooh, ooh, sorry. Yeah, well, no, nope, well, I don't know nothing about it, and I'm sorry that that's happening. Okay, yeah. well, we've, I think, addressed a lot of issues and questions, and as I say, I think that you've been very frank. I believe you've been very honest with me, Chris. And as I said, I hope we're not going to see a flip-flop after this. I don't believe we're going to. I think oh. you've been very sincere. And I would like to think that you might be able to mend some bridges with Astronomy Live oh, absolutely. and others. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's been a lot of things that have been said, a lot of threats that have been made. And um, I, I know that Astronomy Live, his, his place of work, uh, were contacted. Yeah. I'm not saying that that was yeah. you. No, nope, it wasn't me, uh, but I know that that happened, and I, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, a lot has happened, and I think it's good to be getting this sorted out. Um, right. Now, I've just got a, a uh, just a few more questions before we finish up there. And Astronomy Live, I know that you're in the chat, so if there's anything else that you want me to ask Chris while I'm here, yeah, um, please... please um, put something in the comment or, uh, yeah, that's probably the best way. And please put Dazza the cameraman in the comments so it lights up orange for me and then I'll, I'll definitely see it. There you go. Um, now, you mentioned R before, and I won't yeah. say R's name, okay. but we're talking about Scott's girlfriend, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, she was very vocal and very involved in the early days, as I recall, and she even had quite a bit to say to me via YouTube. And um, and by the way, Astronomy Live says, um, thanks, Chris, for your frank replies tonight. Now, I haven't seen anything of R for some time. And I was on a Skype call with Scott several months ago, and R was in the background. And she actually came on and joined uh, in the conversation on Skype talking to me and she was yelling and screaming about the end of the world and how this is happening and the sky doesn't look right and all, all the rest of it and she was quite hysterical 
And I have to say that there were times in that call where it sounded like there was something disturbing going on in the background. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not going to make any allegations. I'm just saying it didn't sound good. And I haven't heard anything from R or seen anything of R for a long time. Have you had any contact with her? Not directly, but she was an admin in WTF Sky's Nibiru chat within the last two weeks. And can you be sure that it was actually her? No. Right. Because I, I have seen a, a new channel that has popped up with her name, but it's not the same channel. And because she actually had her surname as part of her channel name. Uh -huh, and, now, uh -huh. and now, instead of her surname, it just says letter C. And I never delete my email notifications of YouTube comments, ever. So I was able to search back through past comments for her original comments, and her channel no longer exists. So it's not the same channel. So I actually have some very real concerns. I tried sending a private message to that new channel, just saying, hey, I'm concerned for your safety. We want to make, make sure that you're OK. Good. Please let us know. I've not had any reply from her. So I have some very real concerns. And that brings me to the next question. Oh, is, bearing in mind what we know about um, about S's criminal record mm -hmm. and convictions for domestic violence against women and even against a child. Do you have any concerns for the welfare of the, uh, the physicist? Absolutely. And do you know if, if um, Dr. Albers is still with S at this time? I don't. I haven't watched any videos. I haven't communicated. Um, I I kind of got to the point where I felt like she was part of the problem. I wasn't necessarily the uh, victim. That she's right. actually part of the problem. So uh, I did get a hold of the consulate. Uh, you know, I was only able to leave. <laughs> Let's see if I, people are litting me up here. Okay, no, I'm good. Because <laughs> uh, of what it's we're not, talking about. Um, it's not, not the physicist then. <laughs> no, 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 no. I thought it was somebody else. It's not, it's not your handler. With them. It's not your handler. <laughs> no, 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 it's not my handler. He, he's going to contact me later. Actually, uh, you know what, you know what yeah. they'll be saying now? They'll be saying that Daz of the cameraman is your handler. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Oh, I, yep. I already see it. Um, <laughs> yeah. What was your question again? Sorry. Okay. So we're just talking about the the, the safety of the physicist. Yeah. Uh, right. Whether she was still with uh, S at this time, you don't know. I think she is, but I don't know. They never really included me in that information okay. because it was implied I was going to blurt it out to everybody. Right. Okay, well, I think we've pretty much covered all of the questions that have been been sent to me, and I th I thank you, Chris, for your uh, your frankness, You're welcome. and for actually fronting up to this, which is more than what a lot of people would do. In fact, as you're aware, I did invite um, Scott from Nibiru Planet X: The Awakening, and Dr. Albers, the physicist, to a live hangout recently. And the only response that I got from Scott was an expletive-ridden, uh, abusive, um, disgusting comment uh, in the public YouTube comments and an email that also had a pornographic <laughs> image attached of um, two men making out. Uh, one was Jake and the other one was myself. So... <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's some real talent um, there. You know, it's just what I've sort of come to expect from uh, from Scott, 
and you know every now and then we see him uh, crying you know oh have pity on me I get all these disgusting comments from these trolls and they say the most awful things about me he says um, but of course he he seems to um, like to forget the absolutely disgusting expletive written expletive written comments that he leaves under everybody else's videos they're and horrible they're they totally are horrible. inappropriate yep and, and uh, inappropriate and i've been guilty of that crap too he needs to stop that it's uh anyway yeah i agree it's horrible but yeah it's yeah. kind of a you know uh it's kind of like a wimp thing, right? I'll go ahead and do this to you and then hide behind my channel. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> so, Say whatever I, and then hide, right? So, I mentioned earlier that um, Scott actually has me blocked. I don't yeah. have Scott on my channel. Uh -huh. uh, I, don't, I don't fear Scott coming over and commenting on my channel. But, you know, he talks about his two fists of fury, right? And when it really comes down to it with Scott, he's got, mm. he has got two fists of fury. He's got uh -huh. two limp, limp wrists of cowardice, you know? <laughs> he, he's got to hide behind um, blocking so that I can't reply to his comments. And he's, he's, he's too chicken scared to actually front up and do another live hangout with me because he knows now from past experience what he's going to get. And uh, I have him on record admitting in no uncertain terms that he lied, he lied, he lied uh, about this whole business about being in contact with these two professors of astronomy from Pittsburgh University, which he oh, tried yeah. to say from the beginning. That is BS. Yeah, he, I know that's bull. I'm, I'm quoting him there. I, he said to me, in a, in a Skype call, he said, I lied, I lied, I lied. Wow. He also said that, you know, he tried to call my bluff. Yes, he, he tried to call my bluff. And he was never in contact with the two um, professors of astronomy from Pittsburgh University. Of course, I emailed those two professors of astronomy and uh, put to them what, what Scott had said. And they replied via email and said, no, we've had no contact with this man. Whoa. He, Good job. He admitted, yeah, he's admitted on probably three occasions at least now that he lied. I have that recorded and I have posted that in past videos. And I am planning to do another full expose video on that soon as, as soon as I can get around to it. It is going to be a big video. Yeah. And I've also got um, some of his private messages that are going to be voice acted uh, for me So, because nobody likes to, to read long messages. So I've, I've had somebody read them out for me in a, uh, a nice um, Scott impersonation. Um, so hopefully we will get to that soon. So I don't know, uh, Chris, if you can see the, the public chat there at the moment. Are you watching the chat? Uh, no, uh, no. no. <laughs> we've been going for just over an hour and a half now, so I don't want to go for too long because don't sure, want to make the hangout sure. too long. Um, but maybe if there are any questions in the the hangout, um, does Chris know if Scott has been in the habit of of overlaying other experts' audio over his fake video? Now, I believe that we did see this happen recently. Yes, yes. We saw a video from, can you recall who it was? It, it was a university or somebody? I, I don't, but I, I don't, don't, but I remember saying, you know, saying, about, you know about, about audio, audio, audio what, um, um, and that he had, he had said how easy it would to do because so many other channels did that. So that doesn't yeah. surprise me, that allegation at all. So I don't know what it was. But I'm, I could probably almost promise you, yes, that has right. happened. He stole other material and used it as his. Right. Okay. Now, somebody's yeah. just confirmed, and, and I recall that this is true, that it was actually Harvard. So he has taken um, video content or at least audio content mm -hmm. from Harvard mm -hmm. University and overlaid images, his own selected brand of images, of, of course, 
supposedly oh. showing Nibiru, Planet X, Brown Dwarfs, and presented that, that uh, audio in such a way that it, it almost makes it sound like this, um, this speaker from Harvard is, uh, is actually presenting information about Brown Dwarfs, Nibiru, Planet X. Now, I did try to look into this briefly the other night, and I would invite anyone, I don't know if anybody's already looked at this, but if anybody can identify where that audio came from in that video that he, he used, I would like to, or maybe somebody else would like to, contact Harvard and point out the um, what has been done with that audio. I have downloaded and saved that video, by the way. Okay. So I can I can upload it privately so that it can be used as evidence if anybody wants to use it. Okay. Wow. Um, now we you might also recall the the interview the so called interview that he did with uh, um, Gil Brassard some time ago. Do you recall that one, Chris? I only heard about it, but tell me how did that go? <laughs> so he chopped up this. Um, this interview that was it was a video that had been done somebody else's video um, and he chopped it up and he inserted audio of himself asking uh, Mr. Brassard specific questions and then we hear the response from Brassard. That interview never took place and I actually contacted uh, Jill Brassard or Gil Brassard, excuse me, and he did a hangout with me, and he confirmed that they never did that interview together. The whole thing was a construct. It was a fake. It was a fraud. Another fake from Nibiru Planet X, The Awakening. I can't, I'm stunned. And I've been told in the chat that um, it has already been done following up about the Harvard video. Uh, people on Tiggy, uh, Twiggy's team have already done done it so uh, good to hear that and um, thank you for following up on that Twiggy and Twiggy's team awesome this is what it's all about um, let me just I scroll can't up even, so I, I, can't even, I can't even believe that it just really bothers me wow, wow he was talking about how easy it was and how so many channels do it oh, oh wow yeah. Astronomy Live has commented, movie, uh, yeah, the real source of that video has been found, Dazza, and not only did they insert video clips, but they also completely redubbed to the audio to try and make it fit the inserted clips. So there we go. So I hope that, that somebody will at least follow up, and no doubt Twiggy and um, her team are onto that. Uh, I would be talking to Harvard about what Scott has been doing, and I hope that they might even take legal action against him for what he's been doing and misappropriating their audio. Um, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, you know, once again, we see an, another example that um, Scott from Nibiru Planet X, The Awakening, is, is a fraud. He's a hoaxer. He's a liar. That's yeah. why I lost my vocal cords. I was so upset. He's right. the, yeah. one of the worst liars I ever met. Astronomy Live has just dropped the link to that original video. Let me see if I can open that in the new tab, okay. and I'll just okay. say that for later. <laughs> Stop it playing because it'll start up in a minute. <laughs> I, like, seriously, I'm stunned. I can't believe that. You know, he was telling me how he had Gil's private number and called him and all these people's private numbers. And I, I just don't, anything he told me, I think is just BS and I shouldn't believe it. Well, at this point now, it's like uh, everything you told me, I don't even know what was the truth. Yeah. Well, as I've, as I've said many times and I'll say it again, you can always tell when Scott from Nibiru Planet X, The Awakening is lying because his lips are moving. It's as simple as that. I actually agree. Yeah.
you know, some people are just built that way. They just don't want to be honest. And I just feel like it's this intense push to continue to, to push an ideal that potentially is a moneymaker. And that's kind of what the impetus is. I, I really don't know what else it is. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. Right. Yeah, you know, anyway. Chris, just keep an eye on the uh, on the chat if you can. It's it's moving fairly quickly, but I see that there's a comment here. Chris, have you thought about posting videos telling your story for the people that watch Scott's channel or believe in Nibiru? Uh, you're in a unique position to reach those people. Good thought. Absolutely, I have, and I've been really hesitant um, to know to even let people know that I want to do that. I don't know how to approach it. Um, I'm thinking a lot on it. I'll just say yes for now. I do have a very unique perspective. There's very few of us out there in the community that have been on both sides because I really feel strongly I am on the right side now. That's good to hear, Chris. Um, somebody's just asked, what's next for Guido and the quack? Nibiru porn? <laughs> well, we're already seeing the fear porn, so I guess nothing's going to change there. No. Okay. Are there any other comments that you would like to make, uh, Chris, before we wind things up? No. I guess, well, okay. I Thank you for having me here today. I feel really good. I feel very strongly about meeting with you and clarifying and what happened and moving forward and the right foot and making it dang clear with people that I'm sorry. I'm happy to move forward in the right direction. And if I have to start exposing people and start working for my handlers, gosh, I guess that's what I got to start doing. Well, I don't have I just, a problem with it. I just hope that you don't get your check before I get mine because I'm still waiting. You know? Get yours first. You get yours, <laughs> yours, I want to cut, all right? Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> now, I've always said, of course, that there is never any excuse for uploading a video of a lens flare and claiming that it's Nibiru or Planet X because there are plenty of people out there, debunkers like myself, Astronomy Live, Truth Nerd, um, Jerry, um, Robert Lockwood has been recently making some good videos as well, Twiggy, Jake and Mari, um, there's so many people I could name and, and my apologies if I haven't, haven't named uh, you. Um, there are excellent debunkers out there. Um, right Side Up is another one. He's got some fantastic videos. I really like and it. There, is, there is no excuse for uploading videos of lens flares when really all you need to do is contact either myself or any of these other debunkers and say, hey, can you take a look at this video for me, please? What do you think it is? And often we can actually positively identify what it is. And as I've always said, if there's ever a time when we have to throw our hands in the air and say, hey, I don't know what it is, at least you can go away and say, hey, well, Dazza the cameraman or Truth Nerd or whoever couldn't identify what this is, so maybe it's something. But, you know, wow. the other thing is, is that I always ask for, all right, if your Nibiru Planet X is real, what are the right ascension and declination coordinates? Because everything in space has a position in space. And right ascension and declination coordinates is the, is the golden standard that um, astronomers use for locating objects in space. And when we're going to point our telescopes at something, we use right ascension and declination. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, the right ascension and declination is going to be the same, unlike altitude and azimuth, which it, you know comes down to location. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So really point. My, my point is, yeah. Yeah, my point is, is that there's no excuse for uploading videos of lens flares or, or anything else. If you have any questions, send them to a debunker and ask for an opinion before you go uploading your video to YouTube and announcing to the world that it is actually Nibiru Planet X. Because we all know that that is nothing better than fear-mongering. 
And this is what Scott is doing on his channel, uploading lens flares and reflections and God knows what else. It is fear-mongering, and he is doing it for, and you had a one-word answer to that question. What is his motivation, Chris? Money. It's money. Money. It's money. Show me the money. Follow, follow the money. That's what it's all about. So I think we'll wind things up. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining the Hangout. And um, it's been a pleasure having you, Chris. And I hope that this is the start of, of a, uh, a new start. That's right, buddy. It is. Positive, a positive move forward. And uh, I'm glad that we've been able to communicate like this. And long may it continue. So, um, yes, somebody's just mentioned Vortex. Um, if you have any questions about anything, I recommend joining my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X, Vortex. Uh, you'll find a link in the description area underneath this video. Uh, also, I have my Dazza the Cameraman Facebook page as well. Uh, but Vortex is my main page. We have a number of people on there uh, who have all sorts of various skills and different things. I mean, none of us are an expert on everything but we've got a number of people who are experts in their own field and they'll be happy to uh, look at questions. And I try to encourage people to be respectful there. Every now and then I have to post a reminder and say, hey, you know, this is meant to be a safe place where, you know, people are not ridiculed or made to feel like they're being ambushed or anything like that. I want it to be a safe place where people can come along and ask what, might seem to be silly questions and, and get a straight answer. So that's Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. So thank you, everybody. Um, I'll end the, uh, the Hangout now, and uh, I'll try and respond to some comments after the Hangout. I'll be back there in a few minutes. So thank okay. you for joining me. This is Dazza the Cameraman and Chris Potter. Good night.